stop grabs. Make it stop. Hello and welcome to I Can't Believe It's Not the Mouse, the podcast all about animated movies not made by Disney. I'm your host, Octavian Macias, and today we're continuing SpongeBob Month with the second theatrical SpongeBob movie, the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water. Now, personally, I consider this one to be the best of the SpongeBob movies. This was something that I felt even when it came out, as within that time, I felt that the first movie was a little too restrained in its madness. And while, yes, as I've said on the show when I did that episode, it did improve upon rewatch. Upon rewatching this one, yeah, I still feel that's true. Sorry, Sponge Out of Water is just an anarchic mess, but in the best way. Like, it's all over the place, and the fact that this movie even references Mad Max for a good chunk of the plot is understandable because it is really full-on anarchy with the way it handles the story, the way it handles the plot, uh, the jokes. It's full-on to the point that I get where it's exhausting for some people, and I get where some people might not like it. There's another thing that I feel is probably why some people didn't like it as much as the first movie when it first came out. But relatively speaking, this was still a fairly well-liked movie even when it came out. Uh, this was, at least from my understanding, Steven Hellenberg, the creator of the show's uh, big return to the mo- uh, to the franchise. Because, at least from my understanding, after the first movie, he wasn't really all that involved with the show. But he did come back for this movie, and yeah, you can tell that it has a lot of that great Spongebob writing. But yeah, this was definitely a really solid movie. Now, just to give you an idea of what it's about, basically Antonio Banderas shows up in live action as this um, this pirate, and giving his name away kind of gives away the plot of the movie, though granted the trailers did give that out, and I'll explain a, a bit on that. Pretty much, the whole movie is centered around him telling the story to a flock of seagulls uh, that he got from a book, where it's like, okay, this is the downfall of Bikini Bottom, because Plankton, up to his usual shenanigans, tries kidnapping the, the secret formula for the Krabby Patty. Uh, SpongeBob tries to stop him, but the formula disappears. Mr. Krabs believes that Plankton is the one behind it. SpongeBob knows that Plankton did no wrong, so SpongeBob is the only person sticking up for him, which results in SpongeBob being labeled as a criminal too. Bikini Bottom becomes a Mad Max wasteland, and they, it's literally a Mad Max wasteland, which then results in SpongeBob and Plankton trying to figure out what exactly happened. Uh, they create a time machine, they go through time to just get a new formula, and eventually it leads them to the real world, or just the, the land, because realistically it's not like they're like, oh, we're in a fictional world or anything. It turns out they're just on, you know, going to land. You know, Spongebob, those stuff. It it sounds kind of chaotic, and that's because it kind of is. But it works for that, because it really does feel like a Spongebob episode, which is what I really like about this movie, is that it feels like a Spongebob episode in the best way possible. Every single moment is pretty much something new, something crazy, and the story flows in a way where you get how it got there, but at the same time, you can tell that if this was a, a lesser product, if this was not as well written or just with something else, it would have seemed like it was a complete um, mistake. Like, it, it would not be the same thing. In a way, it almost feels like an anti... Well, I don't know if it's if that's the proper term. I think it's the proper term, the anti-film, because it, it really is going through this whole thing where it's like, it's regular beats from a movie, but at the same time, it's such a bizarre way of going about it that it almost feels like it's not a movie because it's like one choice leads to another and then it's like completely different things. Like it's not to the point like with the Digimon movie where it feels like it's a bunch of shorts, but it does kind of get broken up in a way where you could see it in a, a similar manner. But again, it's not to that ex- extreme because it's still one ongoing plot of where is the Secret Crabby Patty formula and eventually where that leads you is pretty interesting. If only the marketing didn't screw it over. And to be fair, I get why the marketing was the way it was. And that's one thing that I, that really improved on me for this one. Because, of course, this movie came out in 2015. We're now seven years away from it. The marketing, you know, hasn't been all over the place the way it was when that came out. Even though I'm still aware of it, and of course I'm still aware of how the movie plays out, it didn't feel as forced or as tired by the time we got to the end. And not that I really had a problem when I initially saw it, but it was one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I get where some people might get upset with this movie because a lot of the marketing focused on the last third of the movie where they're on land 
Even to the point that the name of the movie is Sponge Out of Water. And that's the thing. It's only the last third of the movie. Like, it's really just 20 minutes out of this 90-minute movie that you see them on land. And yet the trailers heavily emphasize, like, oh, yeah, they're going to become superheroes. You're going to see them interacting with stuff on land. And it's like... This is barely in the movie. On the plus side, especially when I saw it uh, back then, it was that I got more 2D than I expected because I thought it was going to be a mostly live-action movie with um, some 2D, but it turned out that it's mostly a 2D movie with some live-action. So that's great, but I get where that might be an issue for some people, especially because it does become tiresome seeing certain jokes over and over and over again and then seeing it until pretty much the last 20 minutes and it's all bunched up right there uh i mean one thing i did find impressive about the trailers is that they even created some fake footage i mean some of it might have been just deleted scenes but from my understanding some of it was just like okay we're just creating like some additional footage just to kind of pad out the trailers which i thought was great it did help but yeah it still made that that last third of the movie feel like almost like its own short segment because of it, because you were like, okay, we're selling you on this one part of the movie, so you're already pretty much seeing all of that in the trailers. The first part is, the first two parts is all just stuff that is surprising, which is neat, but at the same time, once you get to the last one where you already know, it just kind of feels like, okay, time to wrap this up. And, it, it, you know, overall, it, it is fine. Um, I, like I said, it does improve now watching it years on later without that bothering you, without it being this long, tired slog where it's like, okay, yeah, I've seen the trailer, so I know what's going on. It, it, it's a little funnier, and it does fit a little better with the movie now, just because, like, w- when I first saw it, my initial thing was like, okay, yeah, once you get to that point, it's kind of like a theme park, right, in terms of, it feels like, okay, now let's, you know, we've, we've told this whole story, now let's enter what you supposedly thought was going to be the main story for this whole segment, and it's just the characters interacting with stuff and finding out, like, oh, what is land? Watching it now, it does feel like, okay, this actually feels better with the story, even though, you know, yes, you're having your own storyline going on, especially since for a good chunk of this movie, SpongeBob and Plankton are the duo of the movie, but then by this point, it's just SpongeBob with his friends, while Plankton is just kind of in the background. And it does work, because it, it almost feels like how, in movies, you normally get that whole third act where the hero gets separated from their best friend or their lover or whoever for whatever reason only in this case instead of it being an argument it's just because now we're doing a traditional spongebob story but it's kind of not this is where i feel like the term anti-film probably fits in and it because it it really does feel like okay we're doing a traditional story to an extent and then i don't know where it's like okay well we tried solving it we failed. Here's this tragic end for SpongeBob. Except, wait a second. I just realized we still haven't answered where exactly the formula went. We've got some hints, but we haven't figured it out yet. But now here's this. Here's the answer. Here's where the Krabby Patty formula went. Uh, it turns out that the guy who's been narrating the story took it. And he pretty much rewrote the story to his own benefit. And that's kind of a joke. It's, I don't know if, I don't know how many people are going to get this, but if you've ever read Grant Morrison's Animal Man, um, run, it kind of reminds me of that because it's the whole thing where it's like, at some point, uh, Animal Man pretty much encounters Grant Morrison himself in the story and, in a way, this kind of reflects the story from early in the run, where uh, Grant Moore, uh, where um, a- Animal Man encounters a wily e. coyote esque figure who basically talked to his god from his world and sent it to the human world, despite being a tune or something. Like it, it, that's what it kind of feels like. It's like here's the characters like still trying to figure out, like, okay, what's up? They're going up. They encounter the narrator and realize, like, hey, you're the one that has been screwing us over. It's kind of crazy it, it's insane it's something that you normally wouldn't see in a kids movie yet it's still presented in a way where it's like kids will get it but at least from from my viewing um it feels like something that you would get out of something more mature something like i said like an anti-movie in a way because it's not following the traditional structure of a movie and the fact that they're going pretty much against the narrator of the story over it. It, it it's it's clever it's fun and yeah watching it years later it's like not only do i appreciate it more and does it fit more with what i had seen it's just great i mean like i said with last week well not last week but when i did the the first theatrical spongebob movie that movie is better than a lot of theatrical i mean not not a lot well it is better than a lot of theatrical movies but my point is that it's better than a lot of oscar nominee movies this one i think yeah it's better than a lot of oscar nominated movies this movie is better than a lot of 
Oscar nominees for Best Picture. And I am not joking on that. It is just a very wonderful story. I felt like when I initially saw it, I did put it lower than some of the other movies that had come out that year for animated feature like Inside Out. And I'm like, I don't know if I necessarily say that it deserved the Best Animated Film Award that year, but it should have been nominated at least. Uh, I mean, Sean Chi came out that year, and I, I still feel that's the the one that should have won, but whatever. Either way, Sponge Out of Water is an insanely good movie. Insanely good movie. It's got the the writing, the cleverness of the show. Uh, the animation here is somewhat of an improvement on the, the first movie. I will say that much. It's kind of a shame with the SpongeBob movies that when it comes to their 2D animation, not bad. There are good, but it, it, it's only a marked improvement from the show, but, uh, not anything where I would say it's truly impressive. Like with the first movie, I'm still like, okay, the fluidity of the, the animation, like when it, they're moving is, is kind of neat. I do like, uh, some of the coloring on it, but at the same time, some of it does kind of feel flat. This movie, the coloring is a little bit better, but it still feels flat in places to the point that, you know, at times it does feel like a theatrical, you know, movie in terms of how it's colored, but then at other times it feels like it's something that you would probably see on the show. Like, not to, you know, the exact degree, but it does feel like you're not improving it on it that much. But I will say the animation, when it comes to the characters, the way they move, the, the reactions they give is a lot better. There's a lot more personality to just the way they move, the reactions they give. Um, so that stuff is neat. I still think that it could have been a little bit better, but for the most part, it is a really well done movie. And honestly, this was one that I saw in 3D and... I remember watching it. Look, realistically, 3D is not that great, but it's not something that I really ever felt that mad about. Like with some people who wanted to trash it, I'm like, look, I get why it's there. It's not the greatest thing. I do think they could do better with it, but I'm not going to lose my mind over it. It's it's whatever. Uh, and in this case, this was one where it looked a little bit better just because it was kind of neat seeing a 2D movie in 3D. But, you know, that that's all it really was. I mean, um... For the most part, this is definitely a well-animated movie uh, where definitely shines is, of course, in the last third because, well, it, a lot of it is, of course, still live action and it still has a lot of those cheesy effects that you would expect. Normally, I would be more mad about it. I know more people sh probably are mad about it, but I'm like, look, it falls in line with SpongeBob whenever they do the live action stuff. They're always doing the really cheap effects, like with and the show when we, we we get um patchy. It's always like these little cheap effects, so I, I can't complain about that. In this case, when it comes to SpongeBob and his friends and seeing them in live action, that's where it really shines, is because it's one of the earliest instances of an animated movie where they took 2D designs put it in 3D, and they almost come out exactly as how you would expect them to look in 2D, but in 3D. Kind of like with the Peanuts. I know that came out before. No, it did it? No, actually, Peanuts came out after. Yeah, Peanuts came out after. But this one was definitely one where, yeah, it did that kind of thing. Um, you'll see it more on the, the next movie I'll talk about. But it, it's also been, of course, with um, Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse, where even though they're 3D characters, they almost look and move like 2D characters. That's kind of what they did here, and it's still impressive to look at even all these years later. The superhero stuff, I mean, it's cute, it's fine. I feel like it was probably a little more annoying back then because it felt like they were really leaning out in on it on the trailers as well, and it was kind of like, oh yeah, they're trying to be like the Avengers and whatnot. Now watching it, it's like, eh, I mean, that's probably what the main idea was. Well, more than likely, yeah, that was the main idea. Let's poke fun at the superhero movies at the time. But it, it sounds off out enough on its own that it's kind of fun. I do wish this movie had stuck a little bit more with the Plankton stuff in this third, even though, like I said, it kind of feels like it's kind of necessary because they're kind of doing the whole, the two main characters split up, but without doing the argument. But I don't know, maybe they could have had the argument just to kind of make it a little more natural. But as it is, it still works fine. It, it still works almost like it's a... Uh, like I said, it's kind of like an anti-film in, in a way, just because it's doing the stuff that you would expect, but also doing it in ways that you wouldn't expect, or it's just flat out saying, fuck the roles and just going all over the place. But man, yeah, this, this one's a really funny one. The extended time travel sequence is definitely one of the funniest scenes in anything SpongeBob, and it's... Definitely one of the most memorable time travel sequences I've seen in any movie recently where it's just Plankton and Spongebob trying to figure out where to go so you, you get at one point where they go 
like two days into the future and it you know bikini bottom is already completely gone except for patrick who's this old man <laughs> and just a couple of years i mean not even a couple of years a couple of days and he's pretty much warning them of what happened to get a whole sequence where they go way far into the future and encounter a dolphin named bubbles played by matt barry and that stuff is fun and then of course you get them trying to um save the day from earlier in the movie and you get a lot of great jokes out of that the squitter swords rex great stuff the Mad Max parody. It was even funnier because this came out at the time that Mad Max Fury Road was coming out. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it, it's just even funnier that we had two Mad Max movies that same year. Yeah, it's just an incredibly funny movie, a great time. Again, versus the first one, I prefer this one. I get where some of the appeal might be on the first one because the first one flows a, more, a bit more like a like a natural movie, just with the jokes kind of like the, the stuff that kind of satirizes natural normal movies more sprinkled in but i like this this one just goes full-on anarchic um i like that it's just like no it's spongebob it's crazy you're gonna be watching this crazy ass movie and you're gonna deal with it sorry and Tony banderas in the movie you know it's the way that most um live action actors would act in this kind of thing where it's like it's goofy it's you know, for the kids, so it's charming, and, you know, he, he, he's clearly, you know, in on the joke, I mean, you know, this, of course, isn't his first time doing a kids movie, he's done Spy Kids, he's done the the Shrek movies, so, you know, he knows his way around this stuff, and, you know, he works, that, I will say, um, going back with the whole cheap effects, is that he does have a flock of seagulls, and for the most part, they're, they're cute, and have funny jokes to them, um, they're done by CG, though, and, while this isn't really a problem, because I don't, to have too much of a problem with CG. Of course, I have no problems when it comes to SpongeBob and the Friends doing it. My issue with it is that, yeah, when it comes down to it, I do think they should have gone with the show's approach of making them just like little puppets or something. You know, something where it just feels like more cheap, kind of like Potty, uh, Potty, Potty, sorry, Potty, uh, from the the Patchy shorts. But again, those are just minor gripes. I mean, this is really one of the rare movies where I'm like. Yeah, I can point out certain things that I have flaws with, but it's more nitpicks than it is actual problems to a point that it's almost a perfect movie. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that it is a perfect movie or that I don't like movies that have that have flaws to them. Because I've seen a few other movies that I prefer just that I could tell you have much bigger flaws. And yet, in the end, it doesn't really matter because the stuff that's great outweighs the stuff that's good. In this case, movie, it, 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 it's... It's consistently good. This movie is consistently good. There's some really great stuff in there. Like I said, it's better than a lot of Oscar nominees as far as I'm concerned. And not that that really matters, but it's just one of those things that's kind of funny that we put so much time into thinking about the the Academy Awards and stuff like that. And then you realize like some of these movies, like even the stuff that is good, aren't even as good as some stuff that will never be nominated for one reason or another. And we get all bothered by it, or even bothered by the notion of a certain type of movie being nominated just because, oh, well, that's not the kind of thing that they nominate. I don't know, man. This, this, this movie is insane. It, it's great. It's fun. It's just an all-around good time. And, yeah, it's definitely the SpongeBob movie that I'd watch uh, more often, if I had to watch it more often. I mean, you know, honestly, it's just so clever, and I like how this one feels like it's more like it's just like, okay, look, SpongeBob is a known property. We don't have to bend over to, you know, traditional roles. We can just do whatever we want. We're doing a movie. This is our movie. You either accept it or you don't, but who cares? And, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, uh, yeah, it's... You know what? I, I don't know if I got anything else to say other than, yeah, we're going to be doing one more Spongebob movie. This is the last theatrical movie, but, of course, and you'll have to remember this, it was also made straight to Paramount Plus because of the pandemic. This is Sponge on the Run. I'll get more into that one when... Of course, when we get to it, but just to point out, I wasn't that big of a fan of it when it came out. Let's see if some time away from it and rewatching it will change it. It's not that far from it, so I doubt it, but you never know. Um, but yeah, the, you know, the Sponge on the Run will be next. Sponge on the, Out of Water, though, great movie. Watch it. Even if you're not a big um, fan of SpongeBob, watch it. It's great. It's clever. It's honestly one of the best ones that they've ever done, whether it's 
Spongebob stories or just movies based on shows. Definitely a highlight. So, yeah, just give it a shot. And, yeah, you know what? Thank you for listening. If you're watching this, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. You'll be getting some advertisements right now for Patreon, uh, which you have to remember it's patreon.com slash psychams. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the apocalypse. I hope you like leather. Thank you for coming on and listening to me today. If you enjoyed it, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow my podcast. It's on Podbean, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. And if you want to support me even more, there's always the option of Patreon. Patreon is a great way to support artists. And with that, you can always put in a dollar or even more. It's all up to you. All just to help produce the show and other things I may do. Thank you again. And I hope to see you in the coming future.